I've been southbound, I've been hellbound, riding on the midnight train. Going too fast now, think I'll slow down, standing in the pouring rain. What's going on, guys? Tristan and Tony here with the One Hell of a Life Outdoor Podcast. What is going on? <laughs> so what's so why don't you introduce uh, today's guest we got on, Tony? Y'all, we got a very special guest today, and uh, um, goes back uh, quite a bit in, into almost my young young manhood. Um, we got Mr. Dan Perez on the show tonight, or, or today, I'll say. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, you know, Dan, um, if you're in the in the the deer hunting community, or the bow hunting community, you definitely know who Dan Perez is, and he's a co-founder and CEO of Whitetail Properties. Um, and I, I can't even start the rap sheet. So from there on, Dan, I'm going to let you uh, make your make your own introduction because it's a it's a it's a good one. Yeah, l- l- let me back up real quick. I uh, so so to, to maintain being the CEO, I've got to be in the office every day and, and manage activities on a, on a regular basis. I, I, I'm pr- right now presently. I'm a, I'm not the CEO. Let me make that clear. Oh, OK. OK. So, so my protege from day one, uh, Jeff Evans, is the protege, is the uh, CEO. But uh, I, I'm very much uh, involved with Whitetail Properties, but just not in that go in the office every day type of a of a schedule. If uh, so, I just wanted to clear that up. Yeah, we'll, I, we'll say the original CEO. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and and bottle washer and floor scrubber and everything else. You buddy. got it right. That's the way. You, <laughs> that's the way you start a business. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, you know, and and a lot of people don't realize that about starting a business. Um, So we've got right now, we've got uh, over 300 agents spread across over 40 states. And, uh, and we're we're the little office that started in in Pittsfield, Illinois, uh, right next to the beauty parlor uh, on the square, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Uh, It's just a hometown real estate company. Um, and, and we've got great people at the helm, really sharp guys, you know, and, and we've got uh, tremendous staff, uh, tremendous staff. And uh, I mean, our sales force is second to none. But I'm um, going to tell you right now, without God, none of this would have happened. It's impossible. Sure. That's awesome. Yeah, so I wanted to share that right off the get. I, I I don't know the direction that you just sent me, but if you if you don't follow me or, or keep me on a leash, I'm I'm liable to go in any direction. So you I, just you know what? We're honored to have you, so you just do whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 yeah, help everybody just kind of know you know if, if if they don't if they haven't followed you all your life or you know like I have or or something you know kind of. Tell people who you are, you know, uh, who you are, you know, a little bit personal. And if you don't mind, to kind of, um, you know, who, who you are as a as a hunter and, and you've been in the hunting industry all my life. And I yeah. know. So, um, but yeah, just kind of help our listeners uh, get to know you a little bit. Yeah, sure, man. I, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, I say just, and I don't mean justice to play it down, but uh there's too many guys in, in, in every space now. It doesn't matter if it's the outdoor industry. It doesn't matter what it is that beat their chest. You know what I mean? Sure. I, I, I'm proud to be uh, – I consider myself a bull hunter. Here the last few years I picked up a gun, uh, and uh, I, I like everything hunting. I, I, I do. Uh, but but uh, I don't like to necessarily um, – I, I, I like to, after everything, after the hunt, after everything rest, and di- I've digested the memory and everything uh, – I'll take out a tape measure. Okay. Right. And, and I want to see what it scores and stuff, but I'm not the guy that when that animal hits the ground, I'm chasing them with a, with a tape measure. Right. I, I, I don't know. I get this feeling of it's, it's, it's disrespectful, you know? Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, you had mentioned to me, you know, talk about what you've killed and that kind of stuff. I've, I've killed a lot of, a lot, a lot of different critters. Uh, I, I love to hunt the whitetail more than anything on earth. And, and I think it's because I, I grew up with whitetail deer uh, as all of us have, because they're, they're everywhere. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's, it's not an exotic and, uh, it, it they've duped me mm-hmm. so many times. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't know if it's a personal vendetta or what it is, but, uh, <laughs> I, I, uh, I really enjoy, uh, hunting whitetail. And, uh, so I started off here's, here's, how I got into the whole thing and, and the bow and arrow more than anything is, uh, my dad was a hunter and a fisherman. And that was back in the day where there really, for, for me, 
I mean, it was out there, but I didn't, I didn't recognize it because we weren't sports fishermen. If we, if we hooked it, we ate it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we didn't, I didn't grow up uh, where people play golf and stuff. If I, if I, if I couldn't eat it when I was done, I wasn't going to do it, <laughs> uh, you know? And so uh, uh, same thing with, with hunting. My dad, uh, he had a little 22 short uh, Springfield that, that his dad gave to him and, uh, and he gave it to me. And, and just here this, uh, I think like five years ago, I gave it to my son, Danny. Uh, so that little Springfield, uh, bolt action single shot has been in the family for God, man. <laughs> I don't even know how far back to go. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, so, so, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm into that. I, 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 uh, I love family. I love God and I love the outdoors and, and, uh, but what I was getting at with the 22. So, um, he took, he would, he would say today, you know, I'm going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to kill a lot of rabbits. I got six bullets in my pocket and he would head shoot six rabbits with those, with those 22 shorts, you know, wow. he didn't, he didn't waste me and, uh, and he, and he, and he enjoyed the hunting, but, uh, he didn't uh, waste bullets either. <laughs> yeah. He didn't waste bullets. He didn't waste me. He didn't everything. Everything was efficient. Everything he did was efficient. Uh, we, we, you know, I grew up poor in, in, in an area that uh, was very depressed and, and uh, actually very violent. Uh, violence seems to follow uh, uh, low economies, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it, it, uh, but uh, anyhow, so, so um, I'm glad that I'm really glad that I did. I mean, I just uh, I appreciate every day. I appreciate every moment, every sunrise. Uh, every sunset, uh, uh, any day that I'm on this side of the grass, uh, I'm happy. And, and that uh, I wish there was more of that. Now, a lot of people have grown up. We're in a place now that is so dark, man. It's, it's so dark. I can't believe that we got here. If if uh, if my dad, if I, if I told my dad the things that are going on right now in this world, uh, if I had told him that was going to happen back when, uh, I probably would have got slapped. You know, I mean, sure. it is, it's so crazy, so ridiculous. But uh, again, um, you got to keep me on cue because I'll go somewhere else. <laughs> but, <laughs> no, no, but it's it's like it's like, it's almost like a it's almost like a a pretend movie in so many uh, cases. You know, when you think about, it, I mean, you make such a great point. I'm thinking right now about talking to my grandpa, and and uh, yeah, I mean, we all know what it says in the Bible, you know, and yeah. um, and. Yeah, it's 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 a hard thing to wrap your wrap your mind around. But no, no, but just you know, just keep just uh you know you, you're talking about getting into the sport and um you grew up in a rough rough area and stuff and then your dad's an ace obviously with a gun and and uh so continue so he on. Got, yes sir, yes sir. So he 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 didn't want me to be toting a gun. I was too little. And uh and uh, and I was pretty 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 I had a lot of uh really really had too much energy but uh uh so so he got me a little bow and arrow um uh, there was a program through snh green stamps uh this goes way back and they had actually little little showrooms and uh you you bring in your your stamps and so many stamps could buy you uh whatever you know wow. and uh, and so he bought me a little uh, a little uh bow and arrow fiberglass bow and arrow um that uh i got pretty proficient on, uh with that bow with, for a close distance really fast and uh i mean when i when i turned loose that arrow and and stuck my first rabbit i was hooked it, it was <laughs> you know it, it was it was awesome and uh and then i was so proud and and when i really when i really gleamed is when we were sitting at the dinner table and my mom was eating the rabbit that i shot you know what i mean wow it, it meant something. It really, really meant something. Well, as a young but, man, you know, you kind of feel like, yeah, I'm being like dad and I'm putting food on the table, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, and that's where, I mean, this is where it all started. I mean, you, you, they, they drag back whatever the caveman, whatever he killed and man, they'd celebrate it and the family ate and, and uh, not much is not much has changed in that regard with a lot of people. It, uh, uh, ex except it's gotten a little too, too, I mean, I don't say too, too, um, there's a, there's big Eagles. Eagles are bigger than the sport. Mm -hmm. And, uh, that, 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 I, 
well, to each their own. I think it's good. I'm glad that some guys are, are efficient with their with their guns, with their bows, with it, whatever. Uh, but I, I don't I don't think that uh, I don't know. I don't know. That's just a gray area for me. But I, I really I really appreciate the opportunity to hunt and chase. And and at the end of the day, uh, you know, I mean, accolades are, are wonderful. But, uh, man, I'm just another bull hunter. I, I just love the sport. And uh, and uh, I want to keep doing it to the day I die. You know, well, I know. Um, so, you know, one thing that was very unique, you know, y'all is that. You know, I got to meet Dan as a young man and, uh, you know, and, and I've talked before y- y'all have heard me talk about, you know, my mom and her accomplishments and stuff like that, you know, and, and, you know, when you, when you do that kind of thing, you tend to network and meet people in the industries and stuff like that. And, um, uh, and, uh, my mom had, had met, you know, a Dan at, at that point and I don't know if it was at a show or, or what it was, I don't know if you even remember that Dan, but I know, uh, um, I know that that's where they first met. And then, um, uh, of course I met Dan whenever I was, uh, um, I was probably 19, 20, something like that. And, uh, and Dan, at that time you were a representative for PSE archery, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. And so what, what was kind of your role? Was you just a, a, a factory rep or what was kind of your role with, with them? If, if you don't mind. Oh. Yeah, no, not at all. My my uh, my title is regional uh, sales manager for the Midwest, and uh, and and I had uh, at one time I had 172 accounts in three states. It wow. kept me it kept me running, but I loved it, man. I loved it. Um, the business is is awesome. I mean, I exp- when I started, uh, now there's hardly. I mean, a pro shop is a pretty pretty uh, a pretty established business. Usually, it isn't it isn't as as uh, uh, I guess what I'm getting at when I started, I had one account was a barber shop that sold bowls in the back room, wow. and 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 I had a muffler shop on my list. I had different kinds, you know. That that, that it just has evolved a long ways from the day that, that back when I started with PSE. Well, like the old, uh, Western, but I had a, I had a lot Western of, autos. Yeah, yeah, I mean, but I love the people. You know what I mean? I, I the, the the especially those hometown people that that they're peddling a, a few a handful of bows a year and they love the sport. It was awesome. It was awesome. And and I had giant accounts. I had Bass Pro. I had all kinds of accounts. But uh, uh, I love the business. It's it's no not much different in this regard with the business I have now, in that the people that I deal with. Uh, on a daily basis, have the same passion that that I do, you know. And uh, how, how many businesses can say that? You know, I mean, at uh, at one time, my my wife and I had we were actually in the appliance and electronics business. We had several stores down south. And uh, as waterfowlers, we experience all kinds of extreme weather conditions. Stay bone dry and warm with Frog Togs hunting gear. You can check them out at frogtogs.com or at Frog Togs Hunt on instagram i mean i i told my wife i said you know this is a good business is paying the bills and everything but uh i can't see myself doing this for the rest of my life i mean who who goes home and calls their buddy all fired up about that new toshiba microwave oven you know what i mean nobody does it's just uh it and, and there's so many people in this world that are scared to step outside of their box uh, and and they live their whole lives doing something that they they hate. You know, mm-hmm. they they literally hate getting up in the morning and and catching the subway or a bus or driving driving wherever to sit in an office all day or or work on a, on an assembly line. It's not it's not what they want to do for their life. I, I've been pretty fortunate in that. Uh, from PSC, I went into the land business, and when I went into the land business, what drove me is. Bows and arrows, uh, rifles, uh, muzzle loaders, uh, all those things are not really seasons. Uh, they're, in my mind, they're reasons to be in the woods, to be on the land. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Without the land, there's nothing. And, and there's nothing that will improve your, your opportunities at harvesting big bucks or whatever the game that you're chasing than the land. The, if you could work the land, Put the food plots where they belong, uh, build the habitat to it where it'll hold uh, it'll hold good animals. Uh, it, it, it that is that is what it's about. It's about the land, and uh, because I 
as much as I love shooting a bow, I have a lot of gratification when that arrow strikes the middle of anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, it makes me feel good. But uh, what makes me feel really good is that sun filtering through the pines in the morning when it's coming up. And all, all, all you've been there a million times. Everything's coming alive. The, the squirrels are starting to cut. The birds are singing. You know, that's that's the nature. That's what drives me, man. Oh, yeah. man. So that's I, brought me into the land business. I got to imagine from just kind of a whole, you know, gratification perspective, like when you manage, um, I've never, you know, I've never had any, any experience with this, but you know, when you manage a property and kind of your vision comes alive and then you harvest a buck or whatever it may be off that property, it's got to come so full circle, I would think. Oh yeah. Yeah, ab absolutely. And that's a really good point because to me, uh, a 200 inch animal, uh, somewhere that I don't own. Um, and, uh, I haven't managed and I don't have a relationship with that animal. It's still great. Get, don't get me wrong, mm -hmm. but I, I, I value a 150 inch animal that I grew and, uh, and have a relationship with and, uh, and, and built the habitat to hold him. You know, that means that's everything. I mean, that. To, you know, and, and it's it's all relative because uh, some people may never own a piece of land and and uh, will will never have that experience. But but it's it's like nothing else. It's like nothing else. Yeah, it's it's you know, I'm, as you're sitting here talking about this, I'm, I'm thinking of all these other scenarios in my head, and I'm like, you know, my daughter just said to me the other day, she goes, Dad, how come everything you make is the best thing ever? And I said, uh -huh. because we're guys and we're just proud of what we make, even if it's a burger. <laughs> you know and so, that's right you know you make a good burger it's gratifying you know you you go out and i just can't even imagine um we got a good friend of ours that's in the in the process of, of doing that over a two-year period right now going into his third year and uh i want to go down that rabbit hole but but you know we've been able to to learn um a lot by he's a he's a doctor friend of ours and uh has been very meticulous in, in the, the way he's been going about it. a lot of patience and uh, stuff. But so, you know, you, you got into the, the, to the, to the land management business, which really kind of talk about the birth and creation of, of whitetail properties. Where was your vision and, and how you got that started? You know, like, I think what gave birth to whitetail properties is, uh, is all of us. Uh, there's, there's, there's five partners involved in whitetail properties. And, uh, and it's really bizarre how it came together, uh, but uh, um, we all invested in land. We all experienced dealing with agents and brokerages that, uh, that had no business representing land. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, think about this. It, it, uh, land, it's not something that's, that's made in a sweatshop in China, and, and, and you can't buy it off the shelf at Walmart. I mean, it's created by God. I mean, it's, 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 a, it is like the most precious commodity that, that you have because without it, nothing exists. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but anyhow, it, it uh, we all, we all experienced that. We all were passionate about land. And uh, I think, I think I'm, uh, I think we're all pretty motivated people and, and, uh, and pretty good and pretty sharp business people, you know? So it was a merger that was, uh, Again, I, I give credit to God. I don't know how they came together. We, I was working. I, uh, I had, I had a, and this happened a lot through my life. Is is uh, whatever I was doing, I, I, I loved it. Uh, you know, I loved it. You know, I mean, I loved the business. Not so much the appliance electronics as far as love it, love it. But uh, I, I loved it. I created. It. We built it. You know, it, it did very well. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so, but land kept calling me you know every every few years you know I, I, I tell my wife i i really would like to sell land and nobody nobody was selling just land and and certainly not in multiple states um they didn't believe that that you could just make it if you didn't list houses and the laundromat down the road and all that kind of stuff people sell you know mm -hmm. uh but uh, it kept calling me, and, and I'm a conservative guy. I've always been a very conservative person, uh, very conscious that uh, there's never a day that I can't provide for my family, you know? Mm -hmm. And so uh, 
my wife would encourage me. She'd say, you know, do it. If you believe that, that, that that's what you want to do, do it. I know, I know you do really well. But uh, it's not that I didn't know I'd do really well. I just was really conservative. In fact, when I went into PSC, uh, I still I wanted to sell land at that time. But I, I, the reason that you know that I chose PSC over at that time going into the land business was because I had a guaranteed paycheck. Right. Uh, it was, it was, it was, uh, I had a salary plus commission, you know? Uh, so I, I, there was no fear that I wouldn't be able to provide. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then several times during that, while I was at PSC, I would bring it up again, man, I would re- tell my wife, I really would like to sell land. And, uh, and, you know, and this went on and, and I love PSC. I really do. I met people. And, and I went places that I would have never gone if I wasn't with that company, you know? Mm-hmm. And so, uh, so it took 18 years and, uh, and, and, you know, I mean, I keep bringing up God and I hope that's not wearing out, wearing it no, out. No way. Now, not but, not uh, on this podcast. <laughs> uh, so so I, I believe it was God. God said to me, I mean, and when he when he says it isn't a clear voice, it, it's it, it's it, it's it's when that hair comes up in the back of your neck and you get goosebumps and you know he's talking to you. Yeah. Uh, he he said to me, uh, "Listen, you stubborn ass." <laughs> <laughs> he said, "Go sell land." And uh, and by the way, the word "ass" is in the Bible eighty-seven times, so don't. Hold <laughs> <it up>. <laughs> <laughs> So, so that was it. I mean, I, I took, I took a leap of faith and I went to work for a company that, uh, sold land and, uh, uh, it was a local company here in Illinois, uh, maybe dabbled in some other things, but they sold land and that, that lit my world. Uh, I actually approached the local, uh, local office in, uh, Pittsfield way back. And, uh, cause I, I, I knew them mm-hmm. and I liked them and I told them what I, I'd really love to do is uh, after I talked to him about how much land they sold, I think they sold like two properties a month, maybe on a, on a good, you know, it wasn't every month, two properties, you know? Mm. Uh, and they told me there's no possible way you can make a living selling land. Uh, because what I wanted to do was, was re- recruit some guys uh, that I knew were motivated and, uh, and, and build that division of their, of their business. And uh, for a, for a cut, uh, above what my normal commission would be, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, and he said, no, nah, don't waste your time. And so I didn't. And I, I went to work for this other company. Uh, and then, uh, then I got to talking to one of the, one of my clients at the time that I'd uh, done a lot of business with, um, about starting a, a television program, uh, to drive the land business and to help other brokerages that, uh, they, they didn't have a sense for, for marketing and uh, managing and that kind of stuff. So where we could be their arm in that division, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and, and that's how we started. Uh, we, we, that's how the conversation started. And then out of the blue, two, two other guys uh, that I, I knew one of them, uh, and that's Pete Alfano. He's my partner, one of my partners. Mm-hmm. And the other one was Paul Sawyer. Uh, they came to me and they said, Hey, you know, man, you, you like the world with this real estate stuff. And, and, uh, we would really like to do something with you. Uh, and you know, we got to talking about television and stuff. They had, they had a program called knock them down, knock them down TV. Some, something like that. It was, uh, uh, uh primarily duck hunting. And, uh, and I, I, I thought I even said this at the time, man, you, you guys must be tapping my line because I've got this conversation going right now, which with with another fella, you know, mm-hmm. and, oh, wow. you, you know, so so actually two other guys. Um, and so that conversation ended up where all four of us, all five of us merged. We had a meeting. And it was one time we had a meeting. Uh, we talked through it. We didn't have the answers. Uh, but we left there with a plan to 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 start this business. Mm. And uh, how, when does that happen? You know what I mean? Right, right. When does like strangers, uh, not all of them were strangers. Uh, I knew one guy on one side and then I knew the other two on, on the on the business side. And we all came together and we we formed this uh, And whitetail property started. Uh, initially in 2007, 2006 is when we, we started as, uh, 
I think it was Whitetail Trophy Properties. And I think the, the per, and I don't think the purpose of our business was not to represent buyers and sellers as we do now. Uh, the, the purpose of it was, again, to help other businesses do better, uh, spend more time selling land and houses or whatever it is that that we 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 we're we're, we're their arm for and uh primarily land mm. and let us take care of your marketing and uh and your brand uh and that worked it, it was starting to take legs and we had a we already had a bunch of we called them broker partners and we had a, a pretty good number of them already starting to to build uh and then 2008 Obama was telling the world that we were in a recession uh, and that uh, that slowed the payments down uh, as far as the people that we were representing, the different brokers. Uh, so we had a meeting and sat down and said, guys, this is we could do this better than anybody. Um, so rather than try to help them do it, and it's hard to try to help somebody do something that that sometimes they don't uh, they, they don't go along with necessarily. They want you to help them, but they don't. They don't follow the playbook. Sure. But and then the other side of it is as the brand starts to build, we're at risk that we can't control what comes out of their mouth and they could eventually hurt our brand. You know, and and, and but but it for example, now every single agent, everybody, every staff member, everyone is in is white tail properties. We're not a franchise. We don't franchise anybody. And uh, for that reason, we, we want to – our guys, if you read their profiles, they're basically us, every one of them. And our hiring process is like none. I mean it's, it's, it's very rigorous. First, first it's a uh, – you send in your resume, and we've got a gal that – or a guy actually that has the uh, – knows what the criteria is that we want. And, uh, and he – he cuts, he, he calls the ones that uh, don't fit and the ones that, that may fit. Uh, we have a phone interview that's uh, four guys on a phone. It's very, very, very pointed questions. And if they pass that, then we have an in-person interview. No real estate company does that. None. Mm-hmm. If you've got a pulse and the ability to, to, to pass a test, uh, a real estate test, they will hire you because they're banking on numbers. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, many of them make a living on the back. Do you want coffee that doesn't suck? Get the duck. Dirty Duck Coffee is made specifically for the waterfowl enthusiast. Enjoy flavors like Morning Wood, Dark Dynasty, Cinnamon Teal Snickerdoodle, and First Flight to unlock the flavor that you'll enjoy in the blind for years to come. Our friends at Dirty Duck Coffee Company are now offering all Zero Duck 30 followers a 15% discount when you use code ZeroDuck15 on your next order acts of many people because the average real estate agent they don't make any money our, our guys do extremely well i mean it's crazy how well they do but 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 anyway um again i i'll i'll i'll, I'll stray from the direction that i'm going so you gotta you gotta you gotta pull me back in <laughs> <laughs> no no you're 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 good you're good and i mean that kind of discusses you know kind of like the birth and creation of whitetail properties stuff so i guess you know the, the next thing would be is just kind of talk about this, all the services that you guys do. Cause there's, there's, there, you know, you, I know that you can list properties with you guys, you know, you, you can search properties, you know, I know you got your, your AG services division. Um, you know, just talk about those different specialties and, and, and what y'all do in those. Yeah. So everything is under the umbrella of our core competency and that's land, you know, it's, uh, we, we never want to stray from, from the land. So right now we have, uh, we have, of course, the uh, the real estate division where we represent buyers and sellers, and uh, and many of our many of our brokers now or agents in the field have teams as well. So we have teams uh, under the under the agents that uh, are employed by us. So so in in essence, they're they're all under our license. Mm-hmm. But uh, we we continue to expand. Now we're what we're what we are conscious and we are careful. Uh, of is is not to multiply agents uh, in areas. Uh, we 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 provide territories, much like I had at PSC. I had three states where some of our agents, of course, don't don't have a spread like that, but they have they have anywhere from three to to six counties, and that's a lot because uh, all you need to 
you all you need to do is 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 have a fair percentage of any one county and you're killing it mm-hmm. most of the time everybody gets a three percent two percent one percent and and uh and we 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 shoot for the lion's share but uh anyway um this allows them an opportunity to earn a good living and at the same time represent the same time we are represented by the the most talented agents out there rather than a bunch of people just just going at it so that's the first thing we do is is our we represent buyers and sellers and uh, and land and so then we have the farm and ranch division now that's that's a uh, that's got a couple things going one of the things that the farm and ranch is able to do is uh we do help farmers or rather landowners uh better manage their properties um to produce um not necessarily hunting uh but uh the highest yields and uh, and their farms to be uh appreciate in value by, by doing a lot of little things that helps the total investment you know mm-hmm. And and then because we have such a big footprint across the country, uh, we have some some leverage as far as getting some premium pricing uh, for farmers on uh, on products for chemical uh, fertilizer, seed, all that kind of stuff. And that that is uh, that's a benefit to um, to the landowners out there as well. Uh, and and then the, the third thing that that's part of uh, that is part of the farm and ranch division is. Uh, we provide crop insurance, and a lot of people don't know that as far as whitetail properties. But uh, one of the big reasons that we wanted to get into the crop insurance side of the business, and again, these things are to better serve our customers. They're not necessarily because we're trying to squeeze every every penny out of the dirt, uh, but we want a better relationship with farmers, and there's no better way to have a, 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 a great relationship with farmers and landowners than to be able to sit across the table with them, walk their property with them, get to know them on a personal basis. Mm. And, um, but that's that's the biggest part. Now, what a lot of folks don't know about whitetail properties is we don't go outside for anything. We have our, our own production department. Um, you know, our television show, Whitetail Properties, is not the only thing that we shoot. We we also shoot all, all the properties that we've got. You know, like uh, there's all kinds of different packages that, that someone, depending on the size of their property, perhaps, or um, the value of their property, may want more than just uh, – uh, a, a listing and uh, a, a, a really nice presentation on the web page and and advertising. They 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 may may want it a full blown out package and and we do that as well. Um, you know you, you sometimes some of the things that are on some of these properties are so amazing that you, that you can't do them justice uh, with just a normal type of a listing. Hmm. Uh, so so uh, our production department is always out there editing. Uh, and shooting uh, properties all, all over the place in all these states, uh, and that's 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 a that's a big part of our business, the production department. We have our own graphic design department. Uh, m- most real estate companies go outside to uh, to have this printed there, or or to have a billboard made by this company. Or I mean, we can do it all. We do it all internally, and by doing internally, of course, we're saving our agents a lot of a lot of uh, money and uh, we're also providing a premium product whatever it is that we do it's a premium product and so we've got um, we've got a support staff like none you know like we've we've got coos and now now jeff is the ceo and and we've got all kinds of titles creative uh creative design uh just all, all kinds of titles in there but at the end of the day um what they all do is everything they can to pour into our agents. So they're the most successful agents that they can possibly be. And by doing that, we're, we're providing our clients and our customers the best experience than they, that they could possibly have. Yeah. That, that is so amazing that you guys cover it from so many bases and give, you know, your, uh, realtors, like the, just the, all these tools that, you know, to represent the company in an amazing way and just the across the board for it to, you know, all be so stable like that is just really neat. And like you said, like I'm thinking of um, 
my wife's mom's a realtor, you know, just with houses in um, Orlando. And I've kind of outside looking in, seeing, you know, when she's gone from different companies and just stuff like that. Um, and it's such a different world than what you're describing, Dan. And that's just amazing. Yeah. 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 We think, we, we, we think, uh, we think a lot of our people. That, that's you know? so cool. And, and And you're so right. You know, I mean, it's, it's just sometimes you're sitting on a diamond and you don't know it, you know, and folks like you can come in and just say, look, all we got to do is tweak this plot here, this there. And I'm sure you help make the landowners available of any grants and things like that, that they get, you know, for set aside and from different States and how all that works, you know, to, to turn your property into a, not only, you know, develop it, but, but to, to where you're set to make money with your, or, right. or with your own property. You know, a lot of people don't realize that. And I, I kind of learned that through the, my good buddy had just bought that piece up in Iowa a couple of years ago, you know, and he's like, he waited and waited away. I said, man, are you ever going to buy property? He goes, when I find the right one that makes money. <laughs> and, <he> said, <laughs> and, uh, and that's what he waited for. You know, he waited years to do that. So man, cool stuff. Thanks, Dan. And I guess, you know, you, you can go on to whitetailproperties.com y'all, you know, if, if you've got a uh, property or maybe you're sitting on some land and you're like, man, what, what could, what could the value turn into here? You know, it sounds like a good time for you to, to get on whitetailproperties.com and, uh, and check them out and, uh, uh, and give them a call. Hey, you don't know uh, unless you ask. So, um, but yeah, thanks for sharing that, Dan. Um, so, you know, the other reason why for this is on a selfish level that I <laughs> wanted to have Dan on this show was to pick into this man's brain on the hunting side of it. I mean, you know, I know that, you know, I'm in my 40th year uh, as a bow hunter and, and Dan's well beyond that. And, you know, he and I was talking off, off air about, uh, the other day about, uh, I was telling him about how hard deer hunting was in Florida with a bow on public land. And he basically made me cry because he, <laughs> he's, he, he, he's, 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 uh, he's, he's gotten more meat in Florida than anybody I know. So, but, uh, but, you know, Dan, with your experience, you know, you've seen the sport change so much. Um, just the archery equipment, for example, you know, from the recurve bows to shooting instinctive, shooting the fingers before peep sights, you know, um, now we're in the releases and all that stuff. And, you know, what do you think from a, from a, from, a, and I'm saying a bow hunter's perspective, what are some of the most common mistakes you see that someone makes in a pursuit of a trophy whitetail. Mm. Yeah, that's interesting. You, you know, uh, you could do a lot of things right. I mean, you could do this right. You be you could be scentless. You you could do uh, you could um, have your stand in the right right spot, and and you could have the best bowl. You could do all kinds of things right. But if you do that one that one thing wrong. Whatever that one thing is, maybe maybe the wind switched, and uh, and it and now it's blowing, in towards the direction the animals might be either bedded or coming from. Uh, the smart thing to do, but it's really hard for most people to do, is to climb out of that tree and go home. You know, mm. the the hard another hard thing that's this really hard. I mean, impossible for some people to do, is don't go. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. if weather's wrong, everything's wrong. Stay home because that one time in there, if that's the only place you hunt. In other words, that's your farm, that's your lease, whatever it is. And you know, if I go in there uh, on this day in that spot, uh, there's a chance that I may not be able to kill that animal for the rest of the season, much less today, because I've I've, pol I've polluted the air. I mean, he knows he knows that he knows that he knows. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that's the thing about an old an old buck, a young buck. You might eat. You know, we've all done this. You've got a young buck and you grunt and he comes in. He sees you. He walks away. You grunt and he comes back. You know, it, 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 old buck doesn't do that. Mm -hmm. He catches you do something. You don't even know you've been caught. And he may have caught you from 100 yards away. Uh, and you, 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 you so so that's that's one thing. Both of those Less is more, in other words, is what I'm getting at sometimes. And it's really, really, that's the most difficult people thing for people to accept that less is is better sometimes. Um, and most of the times. Now, if you're if you're you're down to three days and that's all you got left of the season, I mean, put it on them. Uh, I mean, rather than stay home three days if the weather's wrong and, and the conditions are wrong. 
yeah, that's the most difficult thing is is to uh, to not hunt or not to hunt when the time when the when the conditions are wrong, and uh, and that understand that you could do everything right, everything could be so cool, you could spend a thousand dollars on a scent lock suit or whatever, uh, but make that one mistake that usually is a matter of uh, just just sheer discipline and willpower. Uh, can mess up everything on a mature animal. It's not. It's not your everyday animal. It. Uh, it's a whole different beast. Now they become extremely vulnerable, as as do all males uh, during the rut. You know, um, they can make up. They can make some mistakes. No, no doubt about it. Um, but uh, on a regular basis, they they pattern you way faster and way smarter than you pattern them most of the time. Yeah, it's it's always been so fascinating to me to, um, you know, especially like here in, you know, Omaha or my grandma talk, um, you know, about stuff back, you know, in the late 80s and early 90s, you know, how she would always, her thing was like, you know, the east wind, she's like the big bucks move on the east wind and just, you know, the non-prevalent wind and just things like that, you know, that you wait yeah. for those days. And I just, it's so fascinating to get, you know, when you break it all down on the strategy on getting these big deer, you know. Yeah, no, I I can relate to what you're saying. There's such a there's such an intelligent animal, you know, and I joke I joked about this before, but you know, my wife just from a, a non hunter perspective just always couldn't connect that she's like, you tell me how smart they are, but they run in front of cars. I just I don't get it, you know. And <laughs> uh-huh. I'm like, yeah, yeah, but but uh, but yeah, but they're obviously doing something uh, uh, during that time that makes them want to run out in front of cars <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> or, or running yeah. from it. But, uh, but man, uh, so when it comes to ground, you know, um, you're, you're the guy out there and, and, and or gal that you own some property. What do you kind of think is some of the most common mistakes that, that people make when either creating or maintaining their property? I mean, would you would, not even mistakes, but you could even turn that into tips. I mean, what what have you seen? Are some of the some of those things out there, Dan? Yeah, so so I, I'll condense that for you. Your goal, um, I don't. It doesn't matter if it's uh, if it's twenty acres uh, or three hundred acres. Now you could get a little sloppier if you've got three thousand acres. You know, I mean, it's hard to run a, an animal off of three thousand acres, but you could run them off of twenty pretty easy, and and you could run them off of third uh, three hundred if, if you're doing things wrong, and you don't have what it takes to hold them. Uh, I, I think as a hunter and a landowner, uh, that that your purpose, your your purpose, two things, that your purpose for owning the land. Th- this is a tricky area. You you've got to be honest with yourself is your purpose for owning the land the land to be able to do everything all the time run that four-wheeler up and down the hills uh run around with your your, with with your buddies doing whatever uh you know if if it's because of of all the things that 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 you can hold an animal on the ground or you could lose them one of the one of the ones that uh is really important is intrusion not to be too intrusive on where they live, you know, so so that's that's a big deal. Uh, and, and you can't achieve what I'm going to tell you now if that's what you now, if your goal is to hold big bucks, you, what you want to do is is you want to make that property, regardless of the size, the core of their core. Uh, so say say that they, they say that a buck's core is somewhere around two miles and some areas where where it's more open maybe it's three miles uh but but you want to make your 30 acres or your 100 acres the core of their core now the the way that you do that is that you you provide the best food whatever that is in that location you provide the best habitat that you possibly can thick uh uh Thick underbrush, uh, plenty to eat in the woods as, as well as outside the woods. Don't get to thinking, let me get rid of all those, make, those acorns because I can't kill them on my food plot. You, you want to you hold them on your property. That should be your goal. Ensure that you have water on that property. There's ways to, to, to add water. If you don't have a natural flowing creek or you don't have ponds on your property, you, you could put those in. You, you could put those in. Not a creek necessarily, but you can put in water sources. Uh, to make that property the core of their core. Now, you're not going to hold them on that property all the time, but your goal 
is to hold them on that property the greatest number of daylight hours. They don't generally get killed at night. So if you keep them on your property, have them bed on your property, have them feed on your property, uh, then you've got something. If uh, my, my, like when I'm looking at land, it might be like looking at, at homes um, if you're looking at it as an investment. Uh, so as an investment with a home, you want to you want to buy um, one of the lower priced houses that maybe needs a little work in the in the nicest communities, the nicest neighborhoods. Uh, and that that way it allows you to come in under value and then you could fix it up and, and bring it to the value of the others. And and you've hit a home run because if they if they bought them already um, finished their margin of, of profitability is not near what yours is sure. but by the same token with a piece of property that you develop and you make it a mega property you probably were able to come in and buy that property under that market's value uh, when i talk about communities we all know these guys that uh they they bought up neighborhoods in iowa i mean miles and miles and miles and they're all on a game plan uh, of growing big bucks and they produce big bucks. Now, even those areas, if you could come in there and, and be able to purchase a property that uh, may, may not even have a tree on it, uh, there's a lot of things, a lot of, a, lot of, a lot of brush, a lot of different plants, a lot of things that uh, trees, they grow rapidly and uh, provide cover quickly, I mean, really quick. And you could add water and you could do all those things. And pretty soon now you've got a property that uh, will hold as many bucks uh, per acre as anyone else in that community uh, for a lot less money and, uh, and, and, but, but make much more sense. In other words, by the, by the flip side of that, um, you could go to a place where there are, they don't produce big bucks. The, the people are on a bad program and it's not a bad program. I say things sometimes that sounds like I'm against people killing uh, younger bucks, whatever floats your boat. I mean, it's your property. It's, it's, it's what you want to do. It's what makes you happy. It's legal. You, you could do it. But now if you're a guy that's looking for an area that, that, that you can harvest big bucks, you're not going to do that in an area where everybody else is killing small bucks. Mm -hmm. you, you follow me? Yeah. It, it, so unless you buy the whole neighborhood, you, it's not going to change. You can't go in there and say, I'm going to buy this 30 acres and, and I'm going to fix it up and I'm going to hold the, the bucks and, and they're going to grow. They won't grow. Eventually, they'll get killed somewhere in the neighborhood. Eventually, if, if, if they're killing everything, you know. So but if you could if you could if you could focus just like a house, focus on the communities uh, that are that are that have what you want regardless of what your price range is, you know, I mean, if it's a, you may end up with less ground, but you can have more opportunity if big bucks are what you want. That is a great, great example um, that I had never thought about in perspective, Dan, is um, that, that um, scenario you just went over. It's so true. I mean, of course you're looking for a good neighbor, but, but ones that have the same vision that you do. I mean, most, most folks in what we do are good people. And if you stop by and just say, Hey, I'm looking at buying this property down here, you know, even if they don't manage for big bucks, most people are going to say, Hey, you know, and, and you get to know them a little bit, at least kind of find if you guys have set, you know, find if you have that, that common ground, you know, that kind of thing. And I just think that's such an incredible point to make before you could make a, a major mistake. If that's yes. your goal, you know, but again, then again, yeah. if your thing is, Hey man, I want to buy this property. I just, I'm a meat eater. I want to buy this property. We're going to run our four wheelers up and down through it all the time during the summer and, and swim in the ponds and all that stuff. It, it, more power to you. Do it. You know, I got a friend of mine that's got property like that, you know, and, yep. and, uh, he, he pulls the biggest fish out of his lake and I want to kick him in the shin and, and everything <laughs> else, you know, but, uh, but that's just the way he is. He's a good old boy. That's just, he just wants his family to enjoy the property, you know, and that's just the way yeah. it goes. But, uh, but man, such, such great points. So, this is where I, where I was really waiting for. All right, <laughs> save the best for last. So, when you um, obviously it's got to be thousands that hit your mind, and and I know this is difficult even for me. But you know, what are some of your favorite hunts that you've experienced in your life? Whether it be whitetail or anything, but what are some of the your your, your most memorable or, or favorite hunts or, or craziest or funniest things that's happened? You know, my mom saw UFOs one night. You know, I mean, just, uh, and, and, and there was actually, uh, um, um, 
an outdoor uh, rider that was out hunting hunting the, this certain uh, stretch of land that night, and he came back and said, "Angel, what in the hell do you guys have in the skies of Illinois here?" <laughs> but uh, but uh, anyway, but what what comes to mind, Dan? You know, when when you think about your your life and and and, and the stuff you've seen. Yeah, so so I, I'll share this. I mean, not necessarily about a specific hunt, uh, but but I, I've got a couple, two or three, four, five, six animals. I won't share them all, but I've got added relationships with animals that uh, that I mean, I still think about them, and I'm, I'm I'm sad that they're gone, and it's been years since they've been gone because my my seasons would start with just that one animal in my mind, and. Uh, one of them is uh, is a critter I, I, I named Savage Seven. He is a sa- he is a seven pointer that was savage, man. His his his, his frame was huge. His beams were heavy, and uh, so I, I think I met Savage when he was uh, he was four years old, and he was a seven. And uh, I, I put a full court press on Savage that year. I was hunting with a uh, uh, fellow. Uh, Joe Ogden was a cameraman that was with me uh, for a couple of years. For a couple of years, we, we chased Savage 7. And the thing about Savage is I had so many close, close encounters that uh, that didn't come together. And it just like, like, that's very, if I get an animal within 15 yards of me, usually he's going to die. I mean, I, I, he can't jump out of the way fast enough. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, but I had so many encounters with him where, where he did this instead of that. And he, just odd things. But uh, but then then two two years passed and uh, Nick Skinner became my cameraman. And uh, Nick and I hunted uh, Savage 7. Uh, maybe we may have hunted him for three years. I don't know. But for sure, two years. And. And the same thing. I mean, there was one day where here he comes, Nick. This is this is it. He's coming. There's a trail that would the direction he's coming from <clears throat> and the trail that he's on. He'll end up about 18 yards from us broadside. And and he's and he's just walking. You know, that walk when they come in at 11 o'clock in the morning and there's tra- they're, they're back trailing de- does that have already come in earlier and bedded. you know, when mm-hmm. they just come. They're walking with their heads down, yep. and uh, and here he comes. Um, I knew this was it. I, I didn't care that he was walking. I wasn't even going to try to stop him. I already had this played out in my mind. I was going to. Sh- I'm going to shoot him walking, and uh, th- that way, there's no way I'm going to booger him. Uh, he'll have an arrow on the other side of the ground from him before he knew what happened. But uh, all of a sudden, clack, 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 clack. It's like. Uh, like 20 bucks fighting together. There was a maniac with a pair of antlers uh, down at the bottom, but he did a good job. I'll give him this. Uh, he, he was way down on the bottom and uh, it was so loud that uh, Savage, he stops, right? He stops and he's about 40 yards. Now, if he just stopped and it was an opening, an arrow would have been on its way, but there was not an opening. I could see him through the brush and he's got in his, he's got his head up in the air and he looks like on his face and his body posture, he's like he's yelling, who's in my house? You know what I mean? Yeah. He's like mad. And uh, and all of a sudden he takes a wide circle and heads down that way, not directly, on the downwind side of where all that hammering was coming from. He ran that way, you know, like circle all the way around. Mm. And then I see him I see him at a distance, maybe 300 yards through the woods, uh, just turn and, and take off. And he still was 100 yards from the guy with the antlers. Uh, but he, he got a double nostril, that guy. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, he did, and he took off. But uh, th- those were the kind of encounters I had with him. And then uh, and then I remember uh, Nick, you know, I mean, his head was full of uh, uh, savage, and, and mine was. And, and here we are, like, like, just we think we're so stealth. We could hear and see everything. And this this guttural grunt comes from behind our stand. It couldn't been it couldn't have been 15 yards. And it, it you know that deep guttural it, it, it scares you. Yeah. It's it's so so deep and so loud. Um, we spin around only to see uh, Savage running off into the down the hollow, 
it, it uh, now how did he slip in there and do that? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It, uh, so the last day of the season, um, I didn't have a cameraman and I hunted alone and it was the last day of the season and I hunted, I hunted, I thought it was the, the best spot to hunt them that day. I had a pile of food. It's, uh, it's January 15th and, uh, all the deer on my property and then some, uh, from the neighboring properties was in that food and no seven, no savage seven, no savage seven. And it starts getting dark and I'm, I'm saying, man, I got five minutes, um, Five minutes came and I climbed down and I'm walking across the field. OK, I'm um, um, three quarters across this field, which is 150 yards uh, before I get to my vehicle on the other side. And something made me look back and I look back towards the direction I came from. And Savage is standing on the edge of the timber in the field, staring at me. Oh and, my and, gosh. Yeah, on the last day, and it's almost like I'm not done with you, dude. Come back, you know. <laughs> it, uh, so, so after that year, I never saw Savage Seven again. But, uh, and that's been a, quite a few years ago. That that's the kind of uh, relationship I had with him. This this is how that animal disturbed me so much, you know. Now I've had bucks that uh, one was Tall Times. Um, <clears throat> I met him when he was two years old, and I uh, watched him grow till he was uh at five years old and i tried to kill him when I, when he was five and i couldn't get him killed and then on, on, when he when he turned six i uh i put an arrow in him uh man i i, I double lunged him i mean i i waylaid him and uh savage takes off running right um so i backed out of there when when everything settled down it um uh, it was about 36 yard shot. Uh, I, I said about it was 36 yards because I ranged him. He was walking down a trail. I had I had hung that stand that night because I seen him uh, using that same trail from across the field. Believe it or not, mm. uh, the, the timber was leafless and I could see him walking through the timber. And so uh, I set up on him. The wind was perfect. The wind was blowing uh, from the from him, not only to me, but out into nothing field you know cattle just cattle field out there mm -hmm. and uh so i'm i'm i i drill them and so i had a couple guys uh ricky stenson and my son my son uh just the best blood trailer i mean he's got ego eyes and he's just really good and 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 we're on it we're on every single drop and and uh so i don't know I don't know why the blood wasn't better than what it was because it was a really good, uh, but you know, sometimes deer don't start bleeding for a while, even to double lug. If, mm -hmm. if they shot it, unless the shot's really low in their body or, or at least lower than the halfway point, you know, sure, sure. and, and it might've been a tad higher than the halfway point. So we're getting a drop here and a drop there and we're gaining. And all of a sudden there's a good blotch. You know how that is. And, and, uh, but then all of a sudden there's a, uh, there's a half a drop. And then, then a, a little bit of a body fluid looking wet spot that's, you know, was, was it him or was it this? You don't know, you know, you know, you, you're, now you're on your hands and knees. Yep. Mm -hmm. And and so, so we, we, we did this for a while. Then we made circles and um, I jump over this rip and this, this two rips to come on, you know, these, these deep rips to come down the, uh, the hillside really deep mm -hmm. from water, I guess, over the years. Uh, so I, I, I jump over the rip and uh, looking on the other side, thinking, man, if he bounded over this rip, he had to hit the ground hard and it'd be blood. And uh, and I'm looking real hard all over the place. No blood. Uh, so my son and I come back and pick up the trail the next morning and uh, and nothing. I mean, we, we didn't find anything past past where we lost the last blood. So he could have gone downhill. So we went that way. Probably didn't go uphill, but we went that way anyway. Uh, and then I came back uh, again and again and again. I mean, I just kept circling everything. You know, uh, I knew I knew he was dead. Yeah. There's just no possible way he couldn't be dead. Mm -hmm. um, one of the two rips that was on the the long story short, because I could go on forever. Uh, this took this took me a couple two three weeks four weeks maybe almost uh, to to find this buck. Wow. Uh, the the rip that we we were short of the rip maybe ten yards or where the last blood was you know and uh, but this rip 
he fell down through the rip and through the all the tr- like these these roots and these branches were growing out of each side of the rip. He went down them like they were a trap door and they sprung back up. What? Now he, wow. Yeah, he's laying at the bottom of this rip, which was like 20 feet on down from the top. And uh, and we we didn't see him. And the only reason I found him is I was way down the hill uh, looking back up uh, and apparently uh coyotes had disturbed him because what i'm guessing happened was he was he was belly down when he fell and and now he was partially belly up and i could see the white like just a little bit but but it wasn't snowing and there's no other reason why white would be down there you know so i ran up the rip and there he was but uh it it, yeah i I wish i would have found him that same night but but i was just man it just tickled that that i found him uh finally found him you know what i mean right so that that was a relationship i had from two years old all the way to six years old and then had a crazy crazy trying to find him but but I'm, i'm i'm really happy that i didn't give up on him you know how many times are you this inches from an animal uh and and then give up on him that a lot, a lot of guys have yep. and uh and wish that they just stuck with it. I, I was with a fellow one time that I helped him trail a deer uh, that uh, we didn't find him. He was still alive. This deer, uh, mine died the night that um, within within a, within seconds of when I shot him. I know that he did. But this this one here, he hit him good. Uh, not 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 great, but good enough to kill him. You know, uh, anytime you you bust that thoracic cavity, he's going to die. Mm-hmm. There's there's no no question. But uh, there was snow on the ground, so we tracked him so far and, and, and lost him. And then the, ne- the next day, it wasn't enough snow. Uh, the next day, it got the snow turned to mud. We got back on it. We didn't find nothing. It snowed again. Now, I don't know if you know this, but you could take a, a dry drop of blood and put snow on it, and that snow will come, that blood will come up to the top of that, that snow. It, uh, it, it's like watercolor. You know, it just like floats up through it. Mm-hmm. Uh, not not it dilutes it but you could tell it's blood it uh so so three days later we got on blood again in the snow that had just fallen on the dry blood drops that were there wow. and uh, followed us so far long story short uh we 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 found him uh two weeks later uh and and it was almost like he was just like he just died and of course that might be because it was really cold but uh two weeks we found him we we didn't we didn't let up on him it it just uh he was gonna die you you owe him that you know yeah (laughs) uh, you know so and you owe yourself that as as well but uh that was tall times um as an eight pointer he was breathing on 180 inches Uh, that was uh, (sighs) a wow yeah that's an animal i didn't you know it 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 would have been great but still i'm still i'm still I mean, there's a big lesson there for me, you know, and those are the ones that uh, mean the most to me. Mm-hmm. If they, if anything that comes easy, I mean, and I've had a lot of easies, uh, a lot of people don't think about, you know, uh, man, that was a layup. Um, you know, that's, that's awesome. Uh, don't beat your chest too hard. You know what I mean? Uh, but the ones that, uh, you really got to work for to get, or, or, or something like this happens, uh, and you didn't give up. Uh, it, it sends a message that that builds a lot of character. It it really does, and and a lot of uh, a, a lot of knowledge too. Um, I love blood trail. When they fall really fast, I I I kind of I kind of feel cheated in a way because I I, I love the blood. You know the the anticipation. Yeah. It's uh it's a cool experience. Yeah, no, I agree with that. You know, it, there's something about you know, uh, we were just talking about this on another podcast. You know, but. Um, I, I consider myself an expert deer tracker, uh, blood trailer. I've done some things that people would, couldn't believe, you know, and, and it's been witnessed, you know, and now I'm starting to see my son do the same stuff. I'm out following the blood trail. I'm like, dude, he's starting to take point ahead of me. My eyes, I need my, I need my <laughs> reading. I, now I need my reading glasses when I'm walking <laughs> on my knees, you know, <laughs> and, yeah. and, and stuff changes, yeah. you know, but, um, but yeah, we, you know, I was just talking about the other day, um, you know, and I hope it doesn't happen this way, but don't lose that, that Native American art uh, of blood trailing. And if you don't know that much about it, try to find somebody local. If you shoot an archery shop or something, talk to other hunters, you know, talk hunting camps, 
you know, even when you're having breakfast in town somewhere during hunting season, it's a good time to talk to other hunters. But, you know, so many people are moving to the dogs now. And, you know, and I hate to say it like this, but it's kind of like, how many times do we get in the car, hit the go button on our Apple Maps, we go there, and you drive that same road several days, and then you go, huh, when did they build that? And your wife goes, it's always been there, <laughs> yeah. you know, because yeah. you're just yeah. you're in pilot mode, you know, and and I hope yeah. that the, the the tracking doesn't get away from that lost art because it's still important as a hunter um, to be able to, um, as you know, Dan, as 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 to have that special ability. You yeah, know? And, that's so much. That's I mean, you know, you're kind of saying, Dan, it kind of bums you out when you know you, you see them fall or whatever. They don't go far, and you you know it's not a long blood trail, and I feel that too because it's the. I mean, the the total experience of it, like the highs and lows of a blood trail, like the times when you're like, man, I don't think we're going to, and you're, you're, you're heart, sick. Yeah. You know, your heart sinks or whatever. And then you get lucky and you find a drop and then you end up finding the deer and then it's just like, you're on cloud nine, you know I mean? Yeah. It just, those moments, you know, are just incredible. Yes, absolutely. 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 I, t- I tell you, um, you don't mind me reminiscing for a, a no, minute. No, please. So, so, so I've been on a lot of blood trails in my life and I, I'm not, I'm not saying this to brag, but may, maybe to, to, uh, put things in, in perspective it, it uh, because I did grow on, up in Florida. I, uh, uh, I had to, I mean, I could kill two deer a day for, for four and a half months, uh, two deer a day for four and a half months. That's how liberal the, the season was. Wow. So I got, got, I got to turn loose a lot of arrows <laughs> <laughs> And then you, you add hogs to that and they don't die too quick. I mean, they're, they're pretty rugged sometimes. Uh, so the, the blood trailing is, is paramount. Uh, so, so I got to trail a heck of a lot of hogs. And, and when you, when I say numbers like this, uh, people can't relate because if they, you grow up in the Midwest where, where you, you could kill two bucks, uh, that's, that's going to be pretty much, and you might help a couple of buddies. That's, that's all your blood trailing, you yeah. know, for that, that reason, if you're lucky, uh, and so, so, but, but I had a lot of opportunity to blood trail. Plus I, I, I hunted wildlife management areas where, uh, where you had to hunt, man. It, it, it uh, there's people walking around. You had to understand what to do when there's pressure from other people and how to hunt and how to get away from pressure. And, you know, but when you go back to the campsite and then we all used to just camp out in the middle of the wilderness there, it, um, people come back to camp and they say, man, I just, uh, I can't find my deer. And so, so I'd always be on this young cat. I'd volunteer to go help them. So I had a lot of opportunities. So I got to really loving, uh, the skills that I picked up, uh, blood trailing. Our partners at HuntWise are offering an exclusive discount for zero duck 30 followers as an elite member. Some of the features you'll immediately gain access to are hunt cast, wind cast, peak kill times, property lines, owner information and phone lookup, 250 map layers, unlimited offline maps, 3D maps, social media, and on top of it all, save up to 50% of some of the top hunting brands in the industry. Download and explore the number one hunting tool set today and save 20% by using code DUCK30. So, so I've had a lot of opportunity. And I, don't, I, don't say, I don't say that to beat my chest. I, I, I say that because I, I just... I, I, I want people to know I'm not talking from the seat of my pants when I'm when I'm saying things, you know, sure. it I, I've had a lot of experience and I have ex, the experience that I've gotten is because I'm so passionate about it. You you can't if if the score is all that matters to you. OK. Uh, and and you feel like you got to kill something. You won't do this a long time. The guy that will kill a lot of game in his life is the guy that is just as happy when he doesn't harvest something as he is when he's harvesting something because like anything else, like life, uh, you, you learn when you lose and you, uh, you celebrate when you win, you know? Mm -hmm. So, so there's no, there's no lose. The, the, the deer are going to beat you way more times that you beat them. The only difference is when you beat them, it's permanent. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mm -hmm. you know, so it's, it's just, I love the learning. I, I love the whole, the whole learning. Um, you know, I wanted to, I wanted to mention this too, just, just while I'm, I'm thinking about everything that we've discussed. Um, so w- we've talked about hunting and we've talked about land and, and do you mind if I talk about the investment of land? Yeah, no, Go please. Oh, oh, okay. So, so every property that, that uh, I've owned, uh, I've been able to leverage, uh, creatively 
uh, uh, ways that the property pays for itself. I, I don't, in most cases, I make money uh, on land. You know, a lot of guys say my, my wife would kill me. Well, she wouldn't kill you if your property was making a hundred thousand dollars a year. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Uh, so, so, and that's not, that is not hard to do. It's just, uh, you have to be patient. You can't fall in love with properties. I, there's a lot of properties that, that uh, I, I could have, I could purchase, or I could have purchased that, uh, were way better big buck properties, but way worse investment properties. And uh, again, I'm a conservative guy, so I'm really smart about the dollar when it when it comes to buying land. And uh, so, if you here's something to think about, or or at least your listeners to think about, if you if you invest in a paper investment, you know you you got to you've got to pay for that the, the entire amount. If you if you're going to invest, let's just use round numbers, a million dollars. Uh, in in stocks, bonds, mutual funds, all that kind of stuff, uh, uh, you've got to put up a million dollars, mm -hmm. and uh, and then then you you sit back and you you pray on it. You could cross your fingers if you want to till they're white. There's nothing you can can do to control the value of that investment you just made. Nothing, and and, and you don't you don't think twice about investing that money without really walking around on the investment, you know, like you do a piece of property. You, you read a prospectus, uh, you're encouraged by a broker, and, uh, and you may make that investment. Now, a piece of land, what, what's cool about it is not only uh, can you make it better. I mean, like, like, I mean, I don't mean about spending a lot of money to make it better. You can, and, and, and you could deduct the, those expenses, uh, but some I, I've sold for for clients I've sold multi multi million dollar properties and uh, bought and put a gate on it for them because they got a piece of barbed wire hanging there to to as a gate. Mm -hmm. You know you've got this this five million dollar property and you've got a barbed wire if it, <laughs> as a gate. It, it, it uh, were, were the I, I it's it's the perception I guess I'm getting at sure. that could be that could be just a phenomenal piece of property. It could be a great a great investment even. And, uh, but, but appearance means a lot. The aviance, when they walk up into, when they walk into that property, it's got to grab them like, man, this is it, you know? Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so I bought, I purchased properties where the landowner was not getting enough cash rent. Cash rent is, is huge. Um, because it's guaranteed if you're the seller. In other words, if you've got a, a, a property, it's just like if you had an apartment complex that's earning X. Now you're selling the earnings of that property to the next person. Same, same thing, but it's, it's, it's land, you know? Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so you, you've got the return right off the bat. Say you've got a, well, I, I bought a piece in, in Missouri. I recently sold it, but I had it for years uh, where I had a, uh, I was getting a six and a half percent return on just and that's after that's after taxes and insurance, six and a half percent return on the uh, crop that was uh, and that's being harvested. And so six and a half. Uh, uh, follow me here. So mm -hmm. on that, I, I put um, I think I put two hundred thousand dollars down on that property and uh, it was uh, the bought the property for seven hundred thousand. So I had I had a balance. And uh, so I, at the time I was paying four uh, percent on interest. So so I'm making <clears throat> I'm making the difference on the balance of uh, of what I'm paying. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm I'm making two two and a half percent on their money. Yeah. You know. Yeah. On their money. Mm -hmm. And so I'm making two and a half percent on their money. Uh, but my total investment, my total investment is not seven hundred thousand dollars. It's two hundred thousand dollars. So if you take you take my return, my yearly return, and you divide it uh, by two hundred thousand dollars. Then my my actual return on my investment becomes uh, I, I think I'm, I'm, I don't I'm no, I don't know exactly right now without hitting it, but I, I believe you're looking at about a thirty percent return on your investment. Wow! Because if the if the if property's paying for itself and making you two and a half percent and all you put down was two hundred thousand dollars. That's all that's all you're out of pocket is two hundred thousand dollars, not seven hundred thousand dollars like you would be if it was a stock or a mutual fund. Mm. Yeah. Great point. You, you track? 
So, yeah. so, so it, it, uh, it is, uh, and then you, then on top of that, whatever you do, that fence that adds to the value, whatever you could depreciate it. Uh, and that's, that's huge come tax time. Uh, so it's, it's, it's just, it's a great investment. Now your goal can be, okay, maybe you got a cattle farm, maybe it's a timber farm, maybe it's a crop farm, but now your goal should be to make it the best white tail farm it could possibly be, because that doesn't really mess with those other investments. Mm. They're still going on, but you got the, you have this retreat that, uh, now, now I'll add this to it because I have sold it and I'm, I won't share what, what I sold it for, but, but, uh, I sold it for a heck of a lot more than what I paid for it. And, uh, now you take, the cash flow that you had all those years and the return that you had on the $200,000 that you put down. And, uh, and then now the co- the property has been paid for, uh, years ago. And, uh, and now I sell it and I take the amount of money of appreciation that I add to what I earned all those years. And now my, my return on my investment is like 150%. Wow. You, mm. <laughs> Wow. It, 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 you know, you just like, how can you do that? You, you, it's like, but, but, but there's nothing. I mean, all, all the people that have ever made it big, big, big in this world. I mean, the, the big guys, uh, have all done it through land. All of them. Uh, yeah. an incredible point. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I, you know, that, that, that my wife that is going to kill me, doesn't cut it. it <laughs> yeah. Kill me yeah, she'll kill you because you can't crunch a calculator. But yeah. but uh, not not because you're, you're wasting money because you're you're not you're not spending it on just fun. You uh, you're you're building you're building your retirement or you're building their future or or you're or you're building um, a ca- a cash flow that uh, uh, there's nothing. I'm, I tell you, I, I've always worked hard. I always work hard. Uh, uh, doesn't matter what else I'm doing in my life, but. It's good to have passive income. Once you do this, it's passive. It's like you go there to hunt. You go there to put food plots in. It's the, the, the farmer or the timber guy or whatever it is is taking care of your farm for you. It, uh, so that's, that's, that's plus plus income. It's, it's awesome. It's yeah. an awesome thing. And, and here's the thing is the average guy. Now, I start, I start saying these things. And, and you've got listeners that are listening. But but they're not maybe grasping it. They, they see it, but they're not really grasping it, but they don't really have to, they can, but what they need to do is if they're interested in land is, is, is find a land specialist. So we don't, I say that and there's other, other people out there, not, not all the companies, but that have good people. Uh, but we like to think we've got the best, but, uh, we've got land specialists. You, you get a land specialist, you tell them what you're trying to achieve and they'll help you achieve it. Just don't get impatient. Uh, and don't don't um, yeah don't get impatient. That's that's the biggest thing. And and here's something to consider too. Right now, uh, with this with the inflation that's going on and the interest rates that are that are going up, uh, a lot of people um, are, are a couple things happen. A, co- a lot of people are, are are kind of forced to put properties on the market that they otherwise wouldn't. So so people who who do really well in real estate do really well in bad markets because anytime you could purchase margin, uh, you could purchase equity rather, uh, you're way ahead. You're way ahead uh, because during a seller's market and that's when the economy is booming and everything's really, really good. Uh, sellers are gouging. I mean, be, let's face it. Mm-hmm. They're, they're, they're selling it for over market value, but they also are more negotiable and willing to be creative. There's creative ways to buy property that uh, will allow you to uh, succeed or take advantage of markets like this. One, one of them is a, uh, a land contract or a contract for deed where, where the landowner, you give them a, a down payment and allow him to own, hold the deed and you make them payments. Now, you have all the benefits of, of a landowner. Uh, except uh, you don't have you don't actually have, have the deed. That doesn't matter to me because if uh, he's holding the deed, still I'm paying down the uh, mortgage, and and the the difference is equity, and I'm I'm earning the equity. I'm earning the appreciation, plus that those taxes, not tax, yeah, taxes too. But the interest on that 
I can uh, I could write off the interest as well, depending on my tax bracket. But uh, that that is a great way to to start get your first property or get any property uh, or, or buy land when otherwise you you wouldn't be able to. But uh, that's how I, that's how I way back when I guess when we first got married, the first few properties I bought, I bought on a land contract. And every time I made a, a bundle of money, every time turned around and put that that money right back in another property. And so that's 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 a good way. And there's there's I'll tell you this, too. Yeah, um, three, three or four guys might get together and they might lease a property uh, and they're paying they're paying that lease sometimes more than they would pay on a mortgage yeah. on a property. You, you know, so. um it's very easy to pull, pull your funds uh, form. I would advise form some kind of an LLC, an entity that uh, where you have uh, an operating agreement. Uh, so there's an understanding between you. Uh, what happens a lot of times, uh, really good friends, uh, the friendships fall apart because they, they had they each had expectations, but they weren't clear to each other. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and and it falls apart. So an operating agreement would be really, really important if you buy with friends uh, it may it may make it may make that that friendship feel a little less than a friendship in the beginning, but it, it'll it'll keep your friendship together. It, yeah. it really. Will. Yeah, um, that makes sense. Yeah. 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 It's uh, there's a lot of a lot of different ways. And, and there might be another another time that we may talk or something because I could rattle about investments because <laughs> uh, land is it lands. Awesome. I mean, it's an awesome thing. More awesome is to own it. And uh, and there's nobody really that that cannot own land. And, and it's, so it's just a matter of how you approach it. Well, you know, I think you, that's a great thing that you, cut, that you just bring up there, Dan, is is how you approach it. And one thing that's important, you know, if you're if if you're married or you got a significant other, you know, and they're not interested in you doing that, you first owe it to yourself to to go back and listen to this podcast again <laughs> because we just got schooled. I felt like I had Dave Ramsey on here for, yeah. for, 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 I mean, th- that was very good advice. And, but I think it's very important that we educate our spouses, um, with just as much education as you've gained to understand how you turn this into profitability. It, in most cases, women just in general, just the way they're built, they want to, understand every part of it, you know, and understand, okay, don't just tell me you're just going to go buy it and, Hey, you're going to make some money. You're not going to get a woman to sign up with you on that. (laughs) But if you break it down, just like Dan just did and talk about it, um, from a no nonsense perspective, uh, respectively, um, now you got your, your, your spouse on board and you guys are in this together. You know what I mean? I I think it's just an important part of, 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 of that as well. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I'll mention one more thing, if if, if you don't mind. Yeah, uh, no, please. So a uh, there's a uh, let me let me think about it. It's a uh, self directed IRA. I always think of the initials, but if I don't say the words, it doesn't mean anything. Self directed IRA. I used to cite Anheuser Busch. Uh, I don't cite them anymore, but uh, because they'll probably be bankrupt before long. But uh, other big companies that have people, uh, and that that was a joke, by the way. But uh, other big, <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I figured that's where that uh, was going. <laughs> uh, other big companies that have a lot of employees have uh, offer four hundred one ks, and uh, they match uh, they match their investments, and that's a great thing. We do that at White Trail Properties as well. And a lot of people that think they can't buy land that's been they've been working for this company for twenty years. They have enough in that that IRA to do a self-directed IRA where the land becomes the investment of of your uh, of your portfolio with that company of, of your 401k. Uh, so so uh, I did one here a few years ago and then I sell I sold that property and and and, and, and I'll, 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 I'll take you through it real quick because I know I'm eating up your time on this and and uh, but I think it's really beneficial because again. Land is great to talk about, but unless you know how to buy it, 
uh, you'll be talking about it to, for the rest of your life. And, <laughs> and a conversation that's, that's very popular is I wish I would have went because whatever land is selling for right now, 10 years from now, you're going to be saying, man, I wish I would have bought it then. Mm-hmm. And, and it doesn't matter what the period is. You always will. That will always happen because land will always continue to go up. But uh, so self, self-directed IRA, you've been working at this, this corporation for, for 20 years and you've built up quite a bit of money. Now, now you, you, you find a piece of property that fits the requirements of the self-directed IRA. One of the requirements is on the, on that particular land, you cannot, it cannot be your recreation land. Uh, It can be connected to recreation land, but that, that part cannot be recreation. No more than you could go play golf on a a paper for a 1k. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's got to be, it's just one of them things that they wrote into it. Uh, so uh, that's a requirement. So keeping that in mind, I'll, I'll walk you through my self-directed IRA. Uh, we've got a fellow here. His name is Joe Durker. He's a intermediary, uh, and the, he's a uh, uh, he he does self-directed IRAs uh, as well as a lot of other things that he does. And so as an intermediary, intermediary, uh, I when I bought this property, I took the the bottom ground and uh, had it surveyed out it was all tillable really nice piece a, a big portion of this the value of this property uh was that tillable piece and so i i surveyed it out because it has to be a standalone property uh and that now that property i transferred the, the my funds to purchase that property with with my my IRA, so that makes it a self directed IRA, and I bought the remainder of it that was around that property, which was the timber, and I bought that as a conventional uh, through a conventional means. You know, I just borrowed the money from the bank and bought that property. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, the I'm not I'm not recreating on the 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 tillable part, but the tillable part is what's holding deer on my property. Mm. And, uh, and, and I hunt all the way around when they're, when they're going to the tillable and when they're leaving the tillable, they're entering the timber and that's where I'm harvesting them. Uh, and it's really awesome. And so now I take the income from the, um, from the, when they harvest the, the corn, uh, well, from my cash rent rather. And, and that income, uh, goes into uh, my my self-directed i rather it goes into uh the intermediary he has that he he invests he takes that money and invests it for me now i set up the investment uh after expenses like whatever taxes or whatever on that property that comes out of the income and then whatever's left over goes into a paper investment that that there was in to begin with earning really good money uh um, uh, and if it doesn't big deal, I mean, it's, it's, it's earning money. And so, uh, I mean, if it doesn't earn real good money, but not the same paper investment, but a, a light paper investment. So now I got the, the, the tillable is earning money. My paper investments earning money. Neither one am I paying taxes on, by the way, it's, uh, at least not right now. It's, uh, it's, 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 it's just like 401k. It, when you, when you spend that money, when you finally take it out, uh, you're going to have to pay taxes on it. It's, it's just deferred. Mm-hmm. Uh, one day you will have to pay taxes. Um, but anyhow, uh, I'm not paying any taxes on any of it right now. Not not on the paper side, not on the uh, uh, tillable side, neither one. And then I turn around and I sell this property. Now, the, I had to do was write it up in two contracts. Same buyer, mm-hmm. bought both, but it's two separate contracts. But the funds that came from the self-directed IRA property, the tillable property, they go, I transferred them right back into uh, the the 401k, boom. And again, I didn't have to pay any capital gain, anything on that, went right back in. Those were the earnings of that property. Mm. Now, the earnings between what I earned on it and what the appreciation on it was phenomenal, was phenomenal, way more than I would have gotten had I been had it been invested in stocks, mutual funds, or bonds? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's an incredible so, point. Yeah, it's and, 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 and you know I'm telling you about it, and uh, I I really don't want to directly discuss it with the public. What I would like to do is refer them 
or they could look up a uh, an intermediary uh, or, or or a professional uh, an attorney that handles self directed IRAs. Mm-hmm. It uh, just get the right the right people. Uh, I I know some and I don't mind directing them. Um, and I don't even mind telling you that one of them I, I, is 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 Joe Durker in Pittsfield, Illinois. He's like really 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 good. He does them for or th- through our agents. Uh, for, for their clients in, uh, like I say, over 40 states. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Great uh, great little, I guess, uh, testimony or lesson kind of there on how you can be creative to, you know, use that land, make you money, and that was great. Yeah, I appreciate yeah. you sharing that. Uh, well, while you while you kill big bucks. Well, yeah. yeah, wow. That's by the by the way, we got <laughs> off the fact that you get to kill yeah. big bucks, which maybe Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. Try but... to get a paper investment and, and kill a big buck on it. I don't think yeah. it'll happen. <laughs> you know, it, it, and I've heard the statement um um for years, you know, but you know, Dan really just painted a picture f- for y'all of you can't afford to not do it. If you, I mean, it feels that way. Yeah. I mean, even if you start off with five acres, mm-hmm. you know, or whatever, you know, um, you, I mean, it, it's just a no brainer, you know? So Dan, thank you so much. Um, and you know, really, I, I hate to cut us off and, you know, cause I want to keep you on here forever, but, um, but you know, everything, all good things come to an end, right? <laughs> but, uh, but Dan, thank you so much much i know you are just as busy as they come thank you so much uh, we're so appreciative to be able to have someone like you on the show and uh and, and definitely uh pass on the blessings to everybody we wish the best for you and, and your company and and everybody that works there and uh man thank you no i appreciate it very much and i appreciate you having me on man Pre- thank you thank you thank you dan it was awesome Yep. Yep. So anyway, uh, right before we get off here, Dan, where can everybody now you guys are on TV? Where can, yeah. where can, we, where can we follow your show? Uh, on the sportsman's channel. And I, I would recommend going to uh, the sportsman's channel, mm-hmm. uh, on uh, Google it and, uh, see our prime is Wednesday. I think it's at eight 30, but, uh, it, they also re air throughout the week and you could see when they re air it. Uh, and and we and we give a lot of tips on that as well. Uh, the show is fantastic. Uh, show it's it's primary for the most part. Whatever the game is in the states that we're in, and most of the states that we're in are whitetail states. Uh, so it's a lot of whitetail. But we do you you will see us hunting elk, and you will see us hunting a lot of different species. In fact, uh, uh, I shot a, a, a twelve uh, a gator that was over twelve feet in Florida uh, oh, wow. here a week ago, and. Uh, now, so now to go to pr- promoting Florida because we sell in, in Florida as well. Uh, but uh, it, it uh, that's the best way to do it. It's go to the Sportsman's Channel and they'll show you all the re-airs as well. That's awesome. And everybody, you can find them at whitetailproperties.com, um, Instagram, Whitetail Properties, Facebook, Whitetail Properties. And, uh, man, again, Dan, thank you. Thank you. Good luck in the field. See you guys. See you. Yep. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Dan. Southbound, I've been hellbound, riding on the midnight train. Going too fast now, think I'll slow down, standing in the pouring rain.